Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and this is part two in creating the head. The head is actually completed, but what we really need to do is start adding the lips and the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is grab those center edges in the mouth and then start extruding. Now I'm gonna grab each vertice and start placing it. And the key is to follow the reference image and make sure that it fits according to the picture as best as possible. So uh, again, the reference image is key extruded already and I'm looking at all sides as always and it's really up to you how you want the lips to be shaped. You want to make sure that you take a look at anatomy courses and anatomy of the lips so you can figure out what's the proper shape. Uh, the lips are actually very important. They express a lot of emotions, smiles, frowns, uh, everything is translated in the mouth. So make sure that uh, you're, you put a lot of quality time into your mouth. Also, don't forget that we're also working in a very tight space. The inside of the mouth is really small. So we're gonna be zooming in a lot and we're also gonna be inside the mouth so that we can get a proper topology for the inside of the mouth. Right now, I'm just tweaking the vertices. Of it. I'm going to grab the edges again and I'm gonna extrude inward. This is, at, this is going to develop the cave of the mouth. Now it's really important to have area where you're gonna place the teeth and you're gonna place um, the tongue and anything else. I call this area the sock, uh, and you will see why I call it that in a second, but right now it's we're inside the mesh and we're gonna go inside the head and uh, I'm gonna try to start developing the inside of the mouth. So again, I extruded. I'm gonna start uh, shaping it so that there's going to be some sort of area in the mouth where if the character opens up their mouth or speaks in any way, there is actually something inside the mouth so you don't see through the geometry. So now I'm gonna be adding a couple of extra edge loops. This is gonna help develop the mouth a little bit further. You're gonna see me go back and forth in the smooth preview and the low poly preview, and that's just to see how the mesh is flowing. Eventually, if I want to, or if it's necessary, I'll go ahead and smooth the character. But right now I'm just working very low poly and a smooth preview gives me an idea of what it's gonna look like. So right now I'm trying to define the shape even more. As you can see, I kind of, I like the tightness of the lip. I'm trying to overlap the vertices as close as possible. So it, it creates that nice little crisp line around the lips. All right, I'm going to notice that I have no nostrils. Now you could texture that part if no one's gonna notice, but I'm gonna go ahead and select those bottom faces and extrude inward so Calico has nostrils. I'm gonna shape the nose a little bit more, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring some vertices down at the front of the nose so that she has a cuter nose. So again, you're gonna see me toggle on a lot just to make sure if everything's moving smoothly. All right, now it's time for the eye. I'm extruding. This time I grab the edges of the inside of the eye and I'm extruding outward so I can develop the eyelid. And then I'm extruding inward so I can create a cavity. Again, there should be some sort of placement inside the eye so that we can work on it. I took some edges from the top and I'm now shaping the eyelid itself. Again, this is a pretty tight area. You want to make sure that there's enough space for all of your geometry and also to be able to shape it. I'm going to be pushing things in and also bringing some uh, edges up and around just to make sure that it makes sense to the character. Now this takes a little bit of practice, so please be patient with yourself. Sometimes it can get a little frustrating to do the eyes. They're a little bit more complicated than expected. So, you know, just be patient with yourself and the more you practice, the better you're going to get. As always, you're gonna notice that I always see something that I need to fix, so I'm gonna tweak the geometry and I'm gonna continue doing that every single time I work with the character. So something that I should have done earlier is place an eyeball in the scene. I should have created a sphere. I highly recommend that you guys do that first before you start modeling. The eyelid should wrap around the eyeball. So I, I'm gonna do that later. I basically know what the shape of the eye should be. Nonetheless, I should have looked at that further. I made the geometry transparent so that I can see through it. And you can notice that my character's eyes are tiny. So compared to the reference image. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. That is an easy thing to fix. That's what I love about 3D. It's very easy to fix these things. You just have to move some vertices around. So I'm grabbing some edges, I'm expanding them and making them bigger so that the character has those beautiful large eyes 
So I always recommend that you take a look at an anatomy reference. The face is pretty complicated with all its muscles and bone structures and how everything combines together and then there's skin on top. I highly recommend that you always take a look at reference and uh, at anatomy and see how everything fits together in this amazing structure called our faces. It's so full of expression. It just tells us so much about the person. It tells us so much about what they're thinking. It's really important to dedicate a, a lot of time to the geometry, to the anatomy and to everything. So sure that you take the time and, and make beautiful work beautiful, accurate work. So I have a funny story to tell you while I'm just tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. So when I was modeling Calico and I uploaded the video about her chest area, YouTube flagged it as potentially inappropriate. So I just thought that was hilarious because I'm like, I can't be the only one that's modeled, you know, breasts before. And then I realized that I was using the term breasts and therefore that was flagging it. And I just thought that was hilarious because there's nothing perverse or anything about my character. And it is part of the anatomy of creating a female form and it just got flagged. Anyway, everything's fine. Uh, I just have to change the verbiage. So now I say chest area. So there are no YouTube hiccups, but I just, I wanted to share that because I just thought it was hilarious. We really are in a, a very interesting culture. So I'm going to emphasize again about grid flow. You want to make sure that there's enough geometry to not only meet the needs of the shape, but also the needs of potentially creating this as a blend shape so that it can be animated with expressions. Make sure that you have enough geometry. If the character needs to make any type of facial expression, the geometry won't break. I know I've mentioned this a couple of times, but I just want to reemphasize it. Right now, I know it looks really creepy. She looks like an alien. But uh, if you really look at her design, she kind of looks like that. She's got gigantic eyes, tiny little nose, tiny little mouth. And uh, but once you have the hair and all the cute stuff and the textures, it's, she's going to look adorable. But right now she looks like a, an alien. Uh, we're fixing that. So notice that I'm always uh, improving the geometry and the grid flow. I always want to make sure that she's looking as best as possible. All right, she's coming along. That's what she looks like so far. Now I'm finally creating the sphere. I should have done that significantly earlier, but um, lucky for me, it actually fits pretty well. And she doesn't look so freaky. Once you add the eyes, it looks so much better. So she's looking like her reference image, so that's encouraging. All right, guys, that is the head. The next part is going to be the hair. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found that helpful. Don't forget to take a look at my website, academicphoenixplus.com. It has downloads for you. It's got newsletters if you want to get pre-release content. And it also has free guides with cheat sheets. Make sure to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.